Hey there! Welcome to a new Sims video. Today I'm building a pub restaurant. This restaurant slash pub is inspired by a pub slash restaurant that is quite near where I live. So I'm kind of copying the exterior from a photo a little bit. And then once I get into the interior, I'm kind of making up the floor plan because I haven't actually been in there and eaten there for like several years. But I just thought I'd use it as a starting point. I wanted to just start with getting an initial shell of the building. And then I started having a bit of difficulty with these two sticky out roof bits at the front. And the problem is I thought they looked really ugly. They look good in real life. It's like a historic building from the 18th century in real life and I didn't think I was going to really be able to recreate it exactly like that. Anyway, these sticky out roof bits were really, they were really not working so I kind of moved them in slightly. So I've not built a restaurant in The Sims 4 before. Restaurants in The Sims 4 are usually quite glitchy when you play in them. Like you can play in them fine but it's like the sims will not always behave like humans would behave in a restaurant. They'll get up from their table and go and sit at another table randomly or they'll pick up food from a different table that they haven't ordered and start eating it or they'll get up while they're waiting for their food or sometimes they might go and like wash the dishes in the sink. It's really weird and quite immersion breaking but there is quite a good mod now for restaurants so I've heard I've not actually used it yet. Carl's Dine Out Reloaded mod. I did download it, I just haven't played with it yet. So I thought I might try that out and see if it's better. And from what I've seen other people playing on YouTube, it's so much better and there's like way more customization options of how you can actually run your restaurant. Because in the vanilla game, you can visit a restaurant and then you can own a restaurant. But when you own a restaurant in the vanilla game, you can't play as like the waiter, you can't play as the cook, you can kind of only play as like the manager and you can hire and fire your staff and increase their wages and send them for training and stuff like that. But yeah, there's just like not that much customization and you can't hire family members, you can only hire sims that randomly show up when, when you want to hire sims. Like the game will just select a pool of random townies for you to choose from. So it's just quite limiting. Um, so I think the Dine Out Reloaded, the Carl's Dine Out Reloaded mod is kind of makes the restaurant system everything that it kind of should have been to begin with. So I'm quite looking forward to trying that out. So anyway, regarding the inside of this restaurant, I made it, I wanted to make it quite sort of a cozy feel with fireplaces and sort of dark wood and because that is kind of what it's like in this real place that it's based off of. And I think anyone, if you are in the UK or Ireland, or you'll know what the inside of a pub feels like. It's quite cozy and has this sort of cozy vibe, but also can be a little bit mismatched on purpose. Like not all the chairs at every table will match or like the decor is a bit, it's not random, it's like themed, but it's not pristine. I don't know how to explain. I felt like quite a lot of the restaurant aesthetic options that come with the the dine out pack are quite like modern or fancy kind of like sleek look or kind of yeah like a fancy fancy restaurant vibe and um, so i used quite a lot of the items from get together and cottage living that have this kind of i guess more european rustic old world feel i don't know that's what how you describe that kind of style because I didn't want it to look pristine I didn't want it to look all match perfectly matching so regarding the outside of the restaurant in real life there's like a car park but there's not really any cars in The Sims 4 I know you can use like debug cars and kind of pretend that there are cars but also where the curb is there's no like like drop curve I think it's called like where the cars would actually be able to drive in so I think it's like it just doesn't really work so I decided to just kind of make it more like a patio area that you just walk up to. And there's actually a car park around the back as well in real life, but um, this is the sim, so we're just, we're just going with it. I feel like this, this building historically would have been some kind of a house, or somebody would have lived there, or it would have been maybe like an inn or something. So I kind of really like the idea of having some like rooms to rent kind of thing upstairs. 
but again there's no mechanic for that really in the game so I don't know it felt a bit random to just have like a restaurant downstairs and then just a couple of bedrooms upstairs I don't know I also think the building isn't big enough in The Sims I think in real life it would be but because of the proportions of the proportions in The Sims never quite match like real life so I didn't go for that I decided to just make it a restaurant only but I did end up in the I think you'll see in a minute I did end up making the upstairs a bit more cozy with like a couch and like a few activities for like more like a hangout spot upstairs with just a couple of extra like seating areas another thing I wanted to do was make the restaurant quite sort of kid friendly because I was playing in a restaurant the other day with one of my families and it was one of like the pre-built restaurants and I had like the dad of the family as the owner and his daughter came kind of like to hang out at the restaurant while he was working on a Saturday sort of vibe but I didn't really want her like working I wanted her to just kind of like hang out but there wasn't really anything to do so in this restaurant I decided to build like a hangout area for kids at the back like a play area kind of thing because I just think it makes the lot a bit more fun particularly with the lot size there's quite a lot of space at the back so there's enough to to actually have something else on the lot I wish there was a way to have some kind of dual functionality on lots for example like you could have a lot that's a restaurant and a hotel or a restaurant and a shopping center at rather than like all the lot types in the sims 4 it's like it's this lot or it's that lot and there are all these different types of lots with like requirements but you can't really combine them i think it would be really useful to have that in the game i don't i don't know if they'd ever really add that but particularly because like the worlds in the sims 4 are not very big so if you want to have like if you were just playing a new crest and there's how many lots in new crest maybe 15 lots and you want to make sure there's enough space for families, all of your families, maybe some empty houses, as well as like parks, shops, restaurants, I don't know, any other kind of like community areas. There's just not enough space. You're always forced to like use another world, which I just find quite immersion breaking when you're actually playing. I know that's kind of one of the advantages of The Sims 4 versus like say The Sims 3, is you can travel between worlds kind of very easily but it's also immersion breaking and it's like if the worlds were just because the worlds are small it would just be useful to have lots that had more than one function so that's kind of what I was trying to do a bit with this lot but I think I decorated the the children's playground off camera so I don't think you see that until the end although yeah I was saying like it's less immersion breaking if you don't have to go to another town maybe this lot would have made more sense in Henford on Bagley I don't know if there is the lot there is a lot with the same size as in that town um, I don't know. I might move it into that town and see if see if it works. I didn't want to go all out with like the kind of the British stereotype like red phone box. Like not every single like <laughs> I don't know. I re I really like the cottage living pack, but I feel it's a bit like stereotyp like very stereotypical. It's not necessarily bad. It's just like not every single restaurant or pub in the UK has a red phone box outside of it. So I didn't want to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think as well because cottage living is very like rural focus it's like based on the Cotswolds so it's like it would be nice if they were going to do more I think city packs in the future like London <laughs> I was gonna say London or I don't know literally any big city but then I say that and they recently did a big city in the what's the latest pack that came out I haven't got it yet growing together yeah I haven't got around to getting that yet and it's like everything is like shells everyone is saying there's like not that many usable lots it, there's so much set dressing and there's not really very much to do even though it's supposed to be kind of San Francisco Bay Area inspired I don't know I feel like would they be able to execute a city well without just using a load of set dressing because I know they did the San Myshuno world I think is quite a good world but that was back when they were bothering to make the worlds bigger like Willow Creek Oasis Springs, Windenburg, San Myshuno, those four worlds are like quite decent sized for The Sims 4. In comparison to The Sims 3 they're still small but in relation to the packs that came later, in relation to the worlds that came later, so like San Sequoia in Growing Together is like really small and therefore relies so heavily on set dressing and kind of using your imagination. So I don't know, I'd really like to see more like city worlds but I don't know if they'll execute them very well. I feel like what would be a really cool world would be any city world, 
but particularly like not an American city world. Maybe like something like Seoul in South Korea, or、um, I feel like Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Like something like really different. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. I don't know if they'd ever do that because people talk a lot about wanting more representation in the game, and I think it's like. It just makes the game a bit more interesting. But again, it's the same thing. Like when it's really difficult to just play in one world because of the size, you then end up dashing back and forth to Willow Creek anyway. Like if you want to go to the library, or you want to go to the park, or you want to go to a particular type of place that there isn't space for in the main world that you're playing in. So that's why I'm just like fundamentally, the small worlds thing doesn't. It's it's not it. It's not it. <laughs> Anyway, so I may have gotten a little bit off topic. Thank you for staying until the end of the video. If you'd like to leave a comment, you're more than welcome to. If you would like to like the video, you're also more than welcome to. If you'd like to subscribe, you're welcome to do that too. So all going well. I will see you in the next video.